everyone, welcome to another meeting here at Your Bilingual Space Connected, a 30-minute space we use to celebrate amazing human beings that one way or another are doing something to improve their lives and the lives of the ones around them. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I am guiding you through today's journey from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I like to remind you that you do not only see us through the Abby Ayala channel, but you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and later on when the show is over on our YouTube channel. Today's topic will take us to the world of yoga. Yoga, as it originated over 5,000 years ago on the Indian subcontinent, can be described as a contemplative discipline which integrates both mental and physical practices with the ultimate goal of attaining Paramatman, pure consciousness. This ancient Indian practice was first conceived by Rashis, Sages, who were in search of a blissful state. This became known as Yoga, embodying the concept of unity between body, mind and spirit. Nowadays, we all have had some experience with Yoga, or at least we know it involves some sweaty body work. But what does it take to become not only a practitioner, but also a yoga teacher? To tell us all about it, I invited Mariana Suarez, who finds herself at the Sri K. Pathabi Joyce Ashtanga Yoga Institute in Mysore, India. Mariana Suarez is an Ashtanga Yoga practitioner and teacher that has decided to devote her life to the practice. Before we dive into her life experience with yoga, let's meet her. Born in Bolivia, Mariana Suarez was raised in Argentina and the United States. She studied yoga in Bolivia under the lineage of the Yoga Yogismo International Association with which she certified herself as a yoga instructor. Immediately, she began to practice and study Ashtanga Yoga. She lived in Costa Rica for two years and was founder and director of the Priya Yoga Shala studio in Escazú, in which she taught Ashtanga Yoga classes in the traditional format according to the KPJ school. There, she was a student and assistant of Mariela Cruz in her Namaste studio. She also has been organizer and assistant in four intensive workshops about miser practice and philosophy of Ashtanga Yoga. In March of 2017, she undertook a trip to Mysore, India, where she was accepted to study with the guru of the Ashtanga lineage, Sharad Joyce. That same year, she founded the first Mysore program in the city of Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia, which she holds it up to the present. In December of the same year, she studied with Sharmila Desai for two months at her school in Goa, India. Sharmila is one of the few teachers with the highest certification degree. In December 2018, she made her second trip to Mysore to study again with Sharad Joyce. This time, she had the joy of studying at the school for two months. Mariana has a deep respect for this lineage and her teachers and is completely committed to transmitting the method as she has been taught. It is my pleasure today to introduce Mariana Suarez, who is talking to us all the way from Mysore in India. Mariana, I know you are in the middle of your practices and on your final days of your all the time you're spending in India. I am so very thankful for you to taking the time and doing this with us. I really, really appreciate it and I cannot wait to hear 
all of your knowledge and everything you have to tell us. So let's go with the first question. Mariana, please tell me a little bit. How was your life before you started your path on yoga? Hi. Um, well, my life was pretty much um, being... It, I didn't have a dull life, but it was much, pretty much me trying to numb myself with other things. And there was a lot of lack of, a lot of lack of mindfulness, consciousness, um, impatience, anxiety, um, you know, not being aware of the moment and just like living without being aware. That's, that's what basically, that's how it was. How how many years have you been on this path already? Um, I think it's been like almost seven years. Yeah. Seven years. And how was that path for you? Let's share with us your first experience with yoga. How did you hear about it? How did you visit your first class? And also, how did you realize that this was going to be your path? Okay, well, my first yoga class was with a boyfriend that I had back when I was in college and his mother was a yoga teacher so she invited us to a class and well he didn't really want to go but I really wanted to go so we went and I really loved it but I didn't follow through I never went back until a couple of years after when I felt like I really needed a change in my life you know yeah mm -hmm. So in which way have you, let's say, let's say when we talk about habit, because I'm trying to kind of have an idea uh, going from general to a specific. So let's say you, you, you went to one class and you liked it, but you decided to come back and continue to learn more and more. So how did your life change in different uh, aspects besides yoga? Okay, well, First, my body started healing and it started opening up and transforming. So um, I felt much lighter and more ener energetic. So I was able to be to do more things during my day like with more energy. And also um, what changed was <laughs> there's somebody else. <laughs> Tell us what's happening that, right now. It's somebody selling it's something something or? He sells herbs and plants that people use to cook their food. So every, mor every morning he says, uh, Sopo. <laughs> I see. Yeah. That's the beauty of India. It's, it's kind of like hectic. <laughs> um, also what changed in me was my mind um, had a lot more clarity and at the moment of where I had to um, make a decision for example I was able to take that decision with more clarity and not just like do whatever you know um, yes also my relationship with the people that were around me you know became stronger and you know I learned to um, care for the people that were around me a lot more instead of only just thinking of myself and to be of service to others. I see. So, for I, as, as I said at the introduction of the show, a lot of people like, we all heard about yoga, we probably visit some class and you know, you never know what to expect. And also we hear a lot of different types or styles. You can hear Hatha Yoga, Vinyasa, and you know, you just go with the flow and see what comes to you. But you, you dedicated your practice to Ashtanga Yoga. So please tell us about it. What is Ashtanga Yoga? Okay, well, Ashtanga Yoga is a very, very ancient um, spiritual discipline that can trace back to thousands of years in the history of India. It is a lineage um, and it's a practice that um, by using yoga postures, the breath and focusing on one point can take us um, 
to observing our inner self. It's a dynamic set of postures that are completely, um, they, they go together with the breath. So um, it's movement and breath. And what it does, it also um, cleanses the body because it creates a lot of heat and removes the toxins from our internal organs and from our mind as well. How would you describe your practice? Mm -hmm. Let's say, and there are different series, there are different postures or asanas. Tell us about the aspects of Ashtanga mm -hmm. Yoga, please. Well, um, Ashtanga Yoga has six different series and it, uh, the primary series, which is the first one that we learn, is um, basically it's a therapy to heal our body, our internal organs, and to uh, make it really, really strong. Um, every series is different, um, and we learn slowly. Our teacher gives us a set of postures, and we have to practice it every day. And it's all based on repetition because this is classical yoga. So like anything that is classical is based on repetition. Doing it every day for a really long time, repeating, repeating, repeating until the teacher sees that we are well established in our practice and gives us another posture. And then we add that to our practice every day. So we wake up really, really early in the morning, sometimes two hours before the sun comes out. And we do our practice every day. Um, it's um, we create a lot of heat and we sweat a lot. So just by that, it's a you know complete detox. And we learn to have discipline and to you know um, do what we say that we're gonna do. If we're gonna practice, we practice every day, no matter what. No matter if we don't, we're feeling lazy or. Um, you know, or if we had a bad day the day before, or if we want to just stay in bed, we get up and we do it anyway. Unless it's moon day, right? Yes, um, full moon and new moon, we don't practice, and also we don't practice on Saturdays. Uh, we try to keep a six day a week practice. Uh, that's the ideal. On, on Saturday or Sunday? Traditionally, it's Saturday, but like in Bolivia, where we live, we use Sunday as our day off because, you know, it's a family day. So. Right. And yeah. also in different and other countries, too, because this practice has been growing and you can find Ashtanga yoga practitioners all over the globe. Yes, totally. It's um, I'm here right now and there's people from everywhere in the world i mean you name it um there's practitioners everywhere um there's no teachers there's not teachers in every country but there are practitioners and so we're kind of like a tribe in the world that we are connected um through the same line lineage like we are connected through the same blood sort of it's really really nice yeah right so mariana tell us you started uh practicing yoga seven years ago and you've been to costa rica right and also you visit india always pursuing to learn more and gain more experience but nowadays you are living here in santa cruz bolivia and you are building the Ashtanga Yoga community here. So tell us about that. How is that experience? What are the, what is, what has been easy and what has been difficult so far? Well, uh, when I first arrived to Bolivia, it was really amazing because I realized that there were so many people that were eager to learn or that had already practiced a little bit and wanted to continue to learn. So immediately, lots of people came to me and I just started growing and growing. Um, that was really nice. But um, one of the things that maybe it can be an obstacle that I think not, not only me, but every teacher goes through is keeping them in the practice, you know, because they, we, you build a community, but you want to keep it 
really tight and you want them to keep on coming back to practice and to make it part of their lives. So I think that's the the hardest challenge for any teacher anywhere. Yeah. Right. Because uh, ideally, your Ashtanga yoga is supposed to be practiced six days a week, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, but and it's you can do it like basically, let's say minimum three and ideally the six yeah. times a week. Oh, you can start, you can even start with two times a week and then, you know, go to three. And then your your body and your mind are going to want to do it more. You know, you're going to wake up and realize that you need it. It becomes part of you. Right. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been uh, um teaching here in Santa Cruz? Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to be my third year um, only. It's not a very long time. Right. But it's been a really nice experience. Right, because after um, dedicating several years to study the method and to having other teachers coming here on your own, because what I'm trying to say is that you came here and here you're, you don't have your teachers. Not the same way you had yeah. it in Costa Rica or not in the same way you have right now in Mysore in India. So, yeah. tell us about that. Well, I decided to go to Bolivia and be in a place where I wasn't going to have a teacher because I really wanted to share what I had learned you know, in those years of being a, a, a student, I really wanted to share it with my own people in my own country. Um, and yeah, I don't have a teacher in Bolivia and I would love to, but you know, reality is I don't. So I come here every year and uh, try to be connected to uh, what to me is the source of it all. And you know, it's kind of like charging fuel to go back every year and share my experience with my students. Right, definitely right. it is a, a whole experience and it does take time. How long have you been this last time in, in India? I've been, I've, I've been here for um, two months. Um, the first time I was here, I came only for one month and it was too short. Right. You know, we, you need more time to be able to go really deep into the practice and with the relationship with the teacher as well. So it's been really wonderful to be here for two months. This relationship with your teacher is so, so important in, in this discipline that I practice. Um, it's kind of like the base of it all. Um, we, the teachers, we teach what we learn from our teacher. We don't change anything or invent anything that's new. Like I said, this is classical yoga, so it's an energy that we're transmitting that has been transmitted to us as well, and then to that teacher and to that teacher for many, many years. Mariana, let's say whoever that would like to have this type of experience, let's say they are already practitioners or they are kind of like having, you know, when you have that feeling that you say, oh, maybe I would like to do that someday. Let's say you have to put yes. it on a guide. What would be step one? To come here, the first thing that you need to have is a teacher that is from this lineage and that has been authorized by Sharad Joyce, which is our teacher. You need to have studied with that teacher for at least two months. And then you need to apply and applications open three months before the date that the class starts. Um, and thousands of people apply. So let's, I think this year, like four to 5,000 people applied. And um, it's only like 350 get in each month and it's only three months. So it's really difficult to be accepted. Um, I'm very lucky to be here. Very, very lucky to be here, yeah. Right, so, okay, you say it, you, you, you find your teacher, you practice for at least two months, then you enroll. And when you get there, how is the living situation? How every day, let's say, what's a given day going to the Patabi Joyce uh, Institute in Mysore, India? Okay, well, we wake up sometimes at 
in between two and four in the morning, depending on our practice time. Um, you know, take a shower, go to the school and we have to wait for a long time to be called in. Our teacher calls in, calls us in one by one and do our practice. Um, it's really, really intense. Uh, lots of heat, lots of sweating, lots of effort, you know, shared effort. Um, you know, it's really exciting as well because some of the most dedicated practitioners are amongst us. Um, and then, well, after that, we come out of class and we have a coconut outside. Mm -hmm. And um, then just go home and uh, kind of like absorb whatever happened in the practice. Yeah, and then we have chanting and philosophy. Yeah, where we study chanting like, classes being the um, the singing mantras, correct? Yes. In Sanskrit. Yes, yes. we uh -huh. chant mantra. Uh, we have a chanting teacher at the school, and we just chant and chant and chant. And these mantras have a certain energy mm -hmm. that stays inside us. It's kind of like the same thing as the practice, but with our voice. I see. Mm -hmm. And then when you do philosophy, it's more of like history? Yes, more than history of yoga, we, we go straight to studying the texts of yoga, like the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Sutras, the ancient text of yoga. And we chant it and then we, all, we, we the teacher interprets the, the Sanskrit and uh, we talk about it, you know, and we also study Sanskrit as well to be right, able to right. have a deeper understanding, yes. Most needed. Mariana, I love to hear everything you're telling us. Unfortunately, we have to go to a fast cut, but we will be right back. People at home, stay connected. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you for remaining connected. We are still connected with Mariana Suarez, who is talking to us all the way from Mysore in India. And I must say, this has been a whole, um, a whole organization because for her it's 8.30 in the morning, for us it's 11.30 at night, but we are thrilled, as at least I am thrilled to have that, uh, make this happen. Mariana, thank you for the time you're taking to uh, share all of your experiences with us. It's and mm -hmm. for the last question, I would like you to tell us and explain a little bit, like you are right now at the Ashtanga Yoga um, Institute, the one in Mysore, which is run by Sharat, correct? Tell us a little bit about the story about him and his grandfather and how all of the, this lineage is so strong nowadays in the whole world. Okay, well, um, my teacher Sharat, he, um, he, Right now, he's like the maximum guru of this lineage. He's the person that is holding this knowledge and this lineage. He's in charge of it all. His grandfather was his guru and he had a guru as well. So, um, Patabi Joyce, his grandfather, he can, we can say he's the father of Ashtanga Yoga and he it took many, many years to uh, create this system as we know it now, and he's the one that brought this um, this the system to the West. Um, he traveled to the states, and that's why a lot of people know it as well there, and a lot of people from there are coming. Um, and well, now Sharat is in charge um, of. Uh, of holding this this knowledge, and he's also been traveling around the world, teaching workshops um, in Asia, in the in the states, in Europe, um, and more and more people are having you know uh, the chance to get to know this, and more and more people more people want to come here uh, because um, there is nothing more than this. This is the source, you know. It's like yeah, it's like Mecca for the Ashtangi. Mariana, thank you so much for the time that you took. I will give you a little space so you can speak to the audience and also share your social media so people can see more of your work. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Well, um, you guys can 
follow me on Instagram. Um, my name is Mariana Suarez Ashtanga. And also on Facebook, Mariana Suarez Ashtanga Yoga. My studio is Ashtanga Yoga Bolivia uh, on both Instagram and Facebook. And yeah, I'm really, really excited to be getting back in a few days and, you know, continue with my teaching, sharing all my experiences with everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always be well and enjoy your last days there in India. A big kiss. Bye, Mariana. Thank you. So there you go. As long as you are able to breathe, you are good to go and give it a try to this ancient healing practice. To conclude, I'm going to cite one quote of the beloved Guruji that says, body is not a stiff, mind is a stiff. I will come back in a week with a new topic and a new friend. Nominate a person you love, you admire, or somebody you would like to support by writing an email to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. Let's get in touch and let the world know about them. Stay connected and until next time with me, goodbye!